let's talk about uh, inking comics. Why do we ink comics? Well, um, back in the day, uh, when comics started, we didn't have scanners and we didn't have printers that could print uh, just a drawing as well as they could uh, like ink. The ink gave uh, images more of a solid form that when printed, uh, it worked better in printing. And so over the years, uh, this become become a, I don't know, it's a inking a page has kind of become something that's associated with comics. You don't have to ink comics anymore. We don't have to do it, but uh, I feel like it's one of those things that gives my comics that classic feel, and I like that. Um, and I also really enjoy inking on paper. A lot of people ink digitally, and that's great. If you can do that, if you want to do that, that's fine. That's not what this tutorial is about. Um, I'm going to be inking on paper because it's what I enjoy, and it, it feels right to me. So, um, and there's no, oh, again, there's nothing better than than looking through some of your pages and thinking, man, I did that, you know. And, and they're almost little pieces of art unto themselves. So. We're going to start inking this page. I've already kind of done a little warm up here, but um, I'm going to talk, before we begin inking this, I'm going to talk about different types of pens. Um, now, if you go to a convention and you ask any artist what pens they use, nine times out of ten, they're going to kind of be like, oh, pens don't matter. You don't need to worry about it. Just, just, you can draw with anything. That's the standard issue answer. And the reason they say that is because, not because they don't want to give up their secrets, but because they get asked that question all the time. Uh, and there's a lot of books that talk about the types of pens, the tools and everything. Um, and a lot of artists just don't like to answer that question because they get asked over and over and over and over. So I'm going to answer this question <laughs> for me. But understand that every artist... Every comic book artist will walk into an art store and find a new pen and go nuts over it. Like, it doesn't matter how seasoned a pro they are, they love pens and they love trying new things. So always be trying new things. Always find new things to, to enjoy and to play with. Um, but I'm going to talk about the pens that I use and what I'm comfortable with and how I use them. So, I'm going to break these down. I use three different types of pens, okay? I use brushes, brush pens, and then I use pens like this, which are more technical kind of pens. And on occasion, on occasion, I'll use big freaking Sharpies. Or I'll go to something like this. This is actually what I use more than the Sharpies uh, to fill in blacks. So I like to call them um, brushes, liners, and blacks. So let's just talk about how each of these are used. So I will use the brushes, um, specifically these two a lot. Um, this is, a, I think, a zebra pen. And this is a Winsor Newton Series 7 right here. I'll use these a lot to help define forms. And for anything organic or anything that needs line weights. Uh, I'll use these two pens here for anything that's more technical or anything that I don't need line weights on. But I need um, uh, you know, to add details or anything that's, that's not organic. And then the big giant brush, I, on occasion I've been known to use this for line weights, but really these days I use it mainly for doing um, adding blacks. Uh, it's it's a really good for all around brush, but you know it, it puts out ink a lot faster than some things. I like my ink to dry quickly. So that being said, we're going. To, I'm going to start inking something here, and I'm going to go through my steps of inking. Just to kind of give you an idea of how I use these brushes and what they're used for. So, um, let's see. I think this is a good panel here uh, to start inking. Um, 
So when I usually ink a page or use an ink a panel, I like to start out doing what I like to call the major forms. Uh, these are the things that that are they're not details, they're not, they're not blacks, they're just the major forms. And I'll use a lot of times I'll use this zebra brush or I'll use uh, the Winsor Newton. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use a zebra just to kind of give you guys an idea. Uh, I may switch to the brush in just a minute, um, but let's try this one first. So when I say major forms, uh, I'm talking about major things that overlap. For instance, here. Now, with this kind of suit, I could use a more technical line um, since it's supposed to be something more technical, but I also want these guys to feel like they're real. And when, you, when you're doing something with a technical line, it usually doesn't give it any life and it makes it not feel real. So, or not real, but it doesn't feel alive. So my, my goal is to give these drawings some energy and some life. You can't see that, can you? Let's pull this down here. All right. So uh, that's why I like using the brush pen for things that are organic or that need some energy or life to them. Now just notice I'm not doing every little detail. I'm doing the major forms. So see how this is the, the basic shape of the head, right? Now, the only thing on the head that really sticks out and has a, a, almost a different form is the nose. It's almost like you've got the circular shape of the head and then this thing protruding from it. So I am going to ink that with this brush because I want it, especially right here, the front of the nose, because it sticks out further, I want it to have a little bit more um, weight there. Uh, now his neck right here, his neck area, is another shape, and it's going to go behind the head. I probably could make this head a little bit more. The line's a little bit bolder, but I don't. it's not that necessary. So, again, I'm just doing these major forms. So here's another one. Comes through here. And here. And a small one there. And right here, this is a funny one because this is a major form. He's got these shoulder, they're not so much shoulder pads, but they're where his shoulder would be, these these kind of like sections here. And then part of his arm there. Now I'll probably go in and, you know what, I'm gonna wait on that background first. Um, now, also something I like to do, I will move this paper around. There's no need to keep it straight all the time if you need, because I pull my brushes towards me and there's no need to try to make your hand do something awkward when all you have to do is uh, figure out if you like to push or pull. Some artists, some artists like to push with their brush. I like to pull it. Uh, so just figure out what's comfortable for you and move that paper around, it's okay. You can move it around. So I'm going to I'm not going to do that bottom lip because with this story I have the light coming you can see it here the light is coming down this way it's kind of coming out too so that light would be hitting the top of his lip so I don't want to put too much emphasis right there so 
I might do these eyes too. I don't normally, I usually do the eyes with a detail pen because I'm not as comfortable with that size, but I kind of want to do these eyes real quick like this. All right, so there's that. Now, I'm gonna take this pen. This is more of a technical kind of pen. Um, but it's bolder than say a micron. It's a lot bolder. And I know right here, I've already blocked this area out for black. So I'm just going to line this and it's okay to, because I know where these two cross, it's okay to do that because it's going to be filled in with black anyway. So I'm not just going to do that. So I know all that's black. I might even throw some X's in there because I know I'll fill those with black. Uh, and the, the reason I'm not filling those with black now, and this is just my thing, is that when I start putting black on the page, when I put big chunks of ink, it can make the page buckle. Um, there are ways around that, but they're just, you know, you can go with thicker paper or sometimes you can even um, use a hair dryer on the page before you ink and that'll kind of prevent that too and you can even get that buckling out pretty easily but it's just a waste of time to me when I can just do it this way and not have to worry about it all right okay so I did I used this pin here too on this corner because Since these were done with the brush, you really can't tell much of a difference here, but uh, this is not the outside edge of this form. It's just a corner, so I didn't really worry about it there. Now right here, again, this is not the outside edge of that form. This is just a kind of like corner. So I'm just going to do that. Now right here, I also know this is going to be black, so I'm going to line that in all right okay so i'm going to use my micron now i'm going to do some of these details um i'm going to do his teeth now because i don't need to show every tooth i'm just suggesting these teeth i don't need, i'm putting a little ticks here um but you have to be very careful with teeth because if you try, if you show teeth, it almost makes uh, figures look monstrous sometimes. So unless I really want to draw attention to the teeth, a lot of times I don't put a lot of detail in there. And I'll say again, I'm gonna these two areas are gonna be black, so I'll fill those in in just a few minutes. I'm not worried about it right now. I'm, I may bring a little bit of this bottom lip through here like that. But again, I'm just suggesting. I'm not trying to draw every little thing. Um, so I'm going to do the eyes real quick. Once you draw in or ink in the eyes, you really start bringing these things to life. That's one reason I use the brush here because I'm, I feel like I'm so bad at drawing eyes sometimes. I just, or at least inking them, it's hard to ink an eye with a brush. So I just don't, <laughs> I just use the little micron. It's okay to do that. It takes a little more time one thing about using a brush is that you can, like, well, if you're using a micron, you can do the same things a brush does. You can get those line weights, but it takes a lot more time because you're trying to do something the brush does naturally. So if you can learn to use a brush or a brush pen, you're going to save yourself. All right. Okay, so as I was videoing, 
I didn't realize that my phone had stopped videoing because I had run out of room. So I'm going to get back into this. Um, I had actually been inking, adding some plaques to this, and didn't realize that it had already gone over. So I'm going to kind of go over adding lacks again. Um, I had gotten the basic uh, line art on that panel done, and I decided to add some blacks with the brush. And again, I use Winsor Newton Series 7. Uh, that for my, in my opinion, is the best brush in the world for inking, and just bar none. Um, there's some other people like other brushes, but this is the one that I prefer. Um, now, when I go to add blacks, if it's a huge black area, like, like just something huge on the page, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna wait to ink that till I'm done. Uh, with the line art on all the page because I don't want it to buckle like I kind of said before but for little areas of black I'll go ahead and do them it's not a big deal um I'm gonna go in I'm gonna kind of erase some of these lines since most of this ink is dried because I don't need it and it also kind of gives me an idea if there's anything that I'm just missing that or that I need to do to make this panel better um I'm gonna kind of erase these back a little bit too, because I'm going to ink over that in just a minute. Alright, so um, so here's my neat, my little trick for when I ink with a brush. Uh, you want this brush to have a nice point. So what I'll do, and I just hold my little bottle of Higgins Black Magic in my hand when I do this, so it's not very far, and I kind of tip it down so I can get see when the brush is in there, in the ink. Um, you don't want to tip it too much. You don't want to spill, obviously. I, I've never had it spill, so it's not been a problem for me. So just be careful. Um, and I'll take this, when I dip it, I'll take it and I'll twirl it on this scrap piece of paper to give it a nice little tip. And then I'll just go in and I fill in the areas that I want to be black. And kind of before, I had already knocked off, already set up some of these areas that I knew were going to be black and I just went in and started filling those in and then, you know, when it runs a little low I'll just dip it back in there it can be annoying that's why a lot of people like brush pens they do they don't like to have to do that all the time but when you start learning how to use one of these Winsor Newton Series 7 brushes you start saying you know it's sometimes it's worth the effort um, I need, I feel like this jaw is a little, needs some, some line weight. And right here, this is not thick enough. So I'll just embellish those a little bit. Right here too. Um, and I was going to <laughs> talk about this before the video is screwed up. But I really think that there needs to be some feathering right here. So I'm going to feather. Some people, when they feather, they push the brush that way. I pull it. So I was, again, I always want to make sure my page is turned so I can pull that towards me. So I'm going to pull. That wasn't a good example. I'm going to start thin and pull thick. Start thin and pull pull thick just like that and see how that works it was kind of easy sometimes it could be easy now I just realized that I connected that there when I really want it to be a little little bit of um, that white line but guess what it's okay to make mistakes this is where a lot of people who ink or who start out inking uh, get frustrated because they're worried what if I make a mistake well I'm gonna show you how to fix a mistake in a minute and we'll do it all right so again I'll kind of want to Feather. Uh, yeah. All right. 
before we fix that mistake, I'm going to move on to some of these other spots. Because guess what? I'm doing something I like. I'm going to keep going with it until I'm ready to make that change. Alright, filling in those blacks. Hmm, what do I, I'll put a little, I feel like they need to be a little, because there's a little space between these things and there's a little cast shadow, so we'll just do that. I don't pencil my stuff so that it, I feel like I'm, I, I, I want to have some room to do different things, like to, to find stuff and to, not just make, some make mistakes, but to, have a little fun. I don't want it to be so, my pencils would be so tight that I can't, you know, just make some stuff up sometimes and do different things. That's why like when I'm inking these rocks, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of inking some stuff. I'm just moving the brush around until it's right. With these rocks, I want a different texture, so I'm I'm not trying to be as smooth or as control. I'm kind of letting the brush do its thing. And I'm also with these rocks. I don't want. I want them to have a texture, but I don't want to go crazy with the detail because this guy is more important than the rocks. And most of those rocks are going to be covered up by a word balloon anyway. So I don't need crazy amounts of detail. I just need to suggest that there's some rocks back there. And that's the thing about inking is realizing that you don't have to fill it full of detail. Some people like to ink with a lot of detail, and that's great. I like to suggest things because, my God, I've got a lot of pages to draw, and I don't need to spend 20 hours on every one of them. I want to get these pages done. So this panel is coming along pretty nicely. I'm going to do a few little things. I could leave it there, but I'm not going to because there's a few little things that I want to do. I want to make this line a little bit thicker through here. Um, also, the way his cheek is here, it feels very flat. So I'm going to add a little bit of feathering here. And maybe some more little detail here. And kind of same thing here. I may do the same thing here. May I add a little bit of feathering? Because I want to push people towards his eyes anyway. Because that's his, his expression is like, <gasps> No, you know, I, I want that to bring your eyes up to his. So. And also, maybe right here, I'm going to do just a little bit of feathering there. Can I do the same thing? Maybe not so much here, but something like that. Now, because this is kind of a close-up, and there's glass that comes up to here. I'm not going to show that glass, but I do think it might be kind of neat to do a little detail here. See again, I didn't draw this in, but because I'm not beholden to 
the pencils being so tight, I can decide I want another element. And I can make these decisions. And I'm gonna put a, a seam there, maybe like a little rivet. Just like that. I think that looks good. Now let's put just a few little pop marks in the rocks. I'm not gonna go crazy because again, I don't want those to stand out. And I may make this a little bit bolder through here. There. I'm gonna call that done. Except for let's fix that spot. Now I use Pro White for making any changes, any fixes. I've got to find another brush. I've got some brushes right here. I use a cheap brush for this part because I don't want to ruin my good brushes. I just got to find one. All right, here we go. This is just a cheap brush. And this Pro White, mine's kind of dried out, but I threw some water in it a while back and it just kind of sticks in the bottom of it. You don't even need much, just a little tiny bit. And I'm gonna kind of twirl it there and just make any little corrections I need to make. It's okay to do this. It's okay to erase. Yeah. Now, if you had like a big spill or something that screwed up your panel um you could always cut out a piece of paper like if it's like the last panel all the other panels are great you don't want to screw it up you always put just cut out a piece of paper and put it over top of it do it over it's not a big deal all right so i'm gonna keep all right now i'm going to stop there for a second and we'll move on to inking another panel because I'm getting close to having to okay I'm back again um, since I already started on this we're gonna continue inking this panel um, we're using brush a minute ago we'll keep using the brush let me get it nice and wet here. Just to kind of keep showing you guys how this works. Okay. Now I'm gonna let's dip that pen brush. I gotta get this kind of set up because I'd had taken a quick moment's break. All right, here we go. So uh, again, I've got some rocks right here. I'm just gonna keep doing this kind of jackety look but right here the it's got the light his hands kind of going through this light so I'm using these rocks to kind of give me a break in the shadow kind of help define that light right there Once we finish this panel, I'm going to ink another panel, and instead of using the that um, this pen, I'm going to use just the brush to do the outlining of the form. So you can kind of see how that works with that too. All right. So we've got these rocks here done. Um, 
because I know the light is coming from down here and it's a strong light so there's going to be some pretty heavy contrast. I'm going to put some shadow on the undersides of these forms here. So I'm going to feather here. I'm going to And because this is cloth, or not cloth, it's like a a plasticky fabric glove that's bunched up, it's okay to kind of make it, the folds a bit irregular. You don't have to be smooth. I'm going to add some feathering here. I'm always kind of keeping in mind where that light source is casting shadow. Now, I could do the same thing here on this piece, but because this piece is like, when I color, I'm gonna know this is gonna be like a lighter color than this. I'm not going to do that just because I want to have a nice, you know, black, white kind of contrast there. Um, because if I did it all the same, everything would look the same. So I want to kind of, since this is more of a plasticky, like almost like a armor kind of look. Um, it's a thicker, heavier material than this. This I'm going to not put any rendering on that to give it a little bit of different feel let's see so i'm just not i mean i'm not over rendering anything i don't think at least i hope not um i also want to put some on the underside of this glove here but i'm going to bear in mind that i know that there's that line here that seam I'm just going up to that line I'm not going to stop same thing on this finger I'll quickly draw in this and then here but with these for instance right here I'm going to put a little shadow here that's cast from this finger. It's casting a little shadow there. And just fill that in. And that looks good. I like that. Um, now, because these rocks, this is the light here, and I wanted to have that contrast, I am going to kind of continue the shape down here across, so you kind of get the suggestion that the, that the rocks are back there, but this light is kind of, is changed the way you see them in the background, so I'm just suggesting some stuff in the background there. Just like that. And this is a really quick panel. This is very easily done, very easily inked. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I may do. Let's do a little more here. Um, because. This right here is like a tablet. It's not going to have a whole... Because uh, I could easily fill this, this side of it. Because this is the front here and this is the side. I could fill this to give it more weight. But I don't want to do that too much because the light's kind of coming down on it. So I'm going to put a little... Like areas where... Um, 
that are in shadow here. And it, since it's kind of the side, you can't do the whole thing, but you can, it kind of curves. So this bottom area is going to get more shadow than the top. I hope you, some of this makes sense. So as you can see right here, this is the side of it and it curves down. It kind of angles at some point, like right here, it's like a, there's an angle. So you're gonna get a little bit of that, that cast shadow. Just doing that, I mean, look at that already. It already gives it so much more definition than it had a few minutes ago, even though what I had wasn't wrong, it just wasn't as good. But if I blacked this whole side in, it would it would just look flat. And having these little bumps of shadow gives you bumps of light, and that's how you create form. I think that looks good. That panel's done. Um, I may, I will in a few minutes once it dries a little bit. I'll erase some of this, and if I feel like I need to add something, I'll add something. But right now, it's looking good. So, um, let's. I'm gonna start on this. I may have to take a minute's break in a few minutes to upload the video. But let's go ahead and start on this. This is going to be a different one. I'm not going to start with my my form lines per se because he has light coming at him in this panel. It's like a brilliant flash of light. So I want to put a lot of blacks and very little lines. So I'm going to start with my shadows. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go just use this brush paint in some of these shadows and you can do this too if you don't have to do the lines first you can you can just do the shadows first and then on anything you could you could do a whole page drawn with and render with nothing but shadow you don't even need lines there's a lot of artists who've done that and done it well. Um, I think Frank Miller does that sometimes. Uh, Chris Somney's done uh, books where he just rendered shadow. I think he said when he first started inking, he didn't know how to ink, so he just started inking the shadow, and it worked. I mean, it works. You can do it. You just got to be very smart about how you put your shadows. But again, the reason I usually don't do this is because a lot of times, like the book I'm working on now, Moon Hunters, it's a very open and I want it to be color friendly. I don't want it to be so thick in the shadows because it's most, supposed to be a fun, open book. So I don't really do that. I don't need to do that. But if I was doing a serious book that was all, you know, need to be dark, you know, I might paint the shadows first. I might ink those in first. Why not? beauty about this brush is that I, mean, I can do these really thin and thick lines. I can do stuff that even brush pens just can't do. They can't do that. Not as well. Not near as well. I am going to do this line because it is basically the shadow there. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that um, objects in the foreground, the shadows are usually going to, if you, if you do a shadow that's a big shape, basically they're shapes. Big, thick shapes are going to usually tend to come forward, and smaller shapes are going to tend to go back. You don't always have to adhere to that rule, but it's something to bear in mind. So for here, um, some of these are 
these shapes here are bigger than some of the stuff through here is going to be. I want these things to be bolder than the stuff back here in the back. See with this, I mean, I'm I can ink this whole panel with this brush if I wanted to. Again, I don't typically do that just because I've gotten used to doing it other ways, but I've done it before and I could certainly do it. Fill this whole section in with black here. Good thing about filling in your blacks first is that you realize sometimes which lines you just don't need. Sometimes you don't need to put all the lines in there, and that can be really cool. Just depends on what style you're going for. Now, Right here, I had drawn in this shadow here. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to make this line, this. See how bold I made that? You don't have to be afraid of making lines bold. And it's not really a line. It's more like a shape in a way. But it really gives this effect a lot more. Yeah, I dropped it a little earlier. Sorry. Really gives that more depth. So let's see what else can we do? How much time? Oh, we're pretty good for now. I'm going to fill in these blacks and then take a quick little break and let this dry. And then we'll do the details on this. I think that's probably a good idea. Now, his hand here. So I'm back. Um, I let the inks dry on this while I went on my little break. You guys probably didn't even notice because I uh, well edit this together. You won't even notice I did it. Um, <laughs> but I kind of finished up the shadows on this panel. Um, and I'm going to go in in a minute and kind of tweak it up. Um, this panel, I went ahead and erased this, you know, kind of some of the line work. And you can see that it's a lot cleaner now. Um, and what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take this pen here and just kind of put in some little lines here. Uh, you'll see this. I didn't even notice this earlier. That's the reason I like to erase and go back and look at stuff because I, sometimes I go, oh, I totally forgot that. So I'm just going to put these little ticks to kind of suggest, again, suggest the form a little bit. Because um, I'm going to do it on this hand as well. And I want to kind of have it consistent. But I don't need to do much to that panel. That panel looks really good. I'm going to throw a little... little crevices here into the rocks just to kind of give it a little texture but that's all I need to do that panel it looked pretty good so I'm gonna keep it all right so um first things first since that's kind of dried up um I'm gonna use my kneaded eraser I use this thing for just about everything 
um, and just lighten up some of these lines a little bit and some of this pencil marks. Now, um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it, my pencils, I use a combination of pencil and blue pencil. Um, the pencil is to the forms and the blues are for shadows. It just helps me kind of differentiate pencil however you want to it doesn't matter to me um, but that's the way I do it just so I know um, I may do a penciling video at some point to kind of show you why I do those things but just for now just know that's why I do that okay so that's lightened up a little bit so let's go in um, I mean I could honestly I could I'm close to leaving it the way it is because I want that harsh light, but I am going to add some lines here or there just to kind of help exaggerate or make that form stand out a little bit better and get some details in here. Not too much. I don't want to go crazy because like I said, this is a very strong light. Right here, I'm going to put this in, and so I want you to know that's a face. Um, but right here, like I'm going to put this shadow for this knuckle, but I'm not going to do all the way around because I don't want. I want it to kind of go in and out. I did put some lines here. Um because I want you to know this is a hand but and what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to put some of those form lines like this but I'm not going to go crazy I just want enough to suggest some texture and form that's really all I need there. Um, now I'm going to take my Micron and go into his face because I don't think his face has got enough detail to know it's a face yet. And the hard part is trying to figure out where I can start and where I need to stop. Now, since he has this kind of goatee thing, I want to suggest that too, just so you know it's the same guy. Alright, now we're going to do his nostrils. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna draw his nostrils in. I just want to suggest that one. Now this is where it's going to get a little tricky because the bridge of his nose would cast shadow. But only so far. So I'm going to do these little, which I could could have done with his brush, but since it's on his face and it's so small, yeah, that looks good. I didn't want to screw it up. He's got his eyes closed, so I'm going to hint at some eyelashes here.
think his face is fine. Um, I'm not putting any grays in here. And the reason I'm not doing that is because, again, it's a very harsh light. And I don't, you know, if you have a harsh light, usually it's very strong cast shadows and very few grays. I don't want any grays. Now I realize right there, yeah. going to suggest these um, seam lines again right here and down here and here Right here, I want it's like a seam in this hard plastic, but it's not very thick, it's just a very little seam as a detail that kind of helps define that form a little more there, too. And then, right through here, I'm going to suggest that this seam here this got a little thickness because it's up close I'm not gonna draw the whole line just like that all right and as you can see I mean that panel is mostly done I can't really see much that I would change so those are my kind of tips on inking I don't know if you've learned anything I hope you have um, and you know if you have please I would love for you to leave a like or a uh, you know, or subscribe to my channel. I will be posting more videos. I like to do time-lapse videos, but if you have any tutorials or anything that you think you'd like to see or something that you'd like me to explain more, please feel free to just ask me, email me or leave a comment or something. And, um, I'll try to do some. I like, I like, you know, I don't, I like making videos. I like drawing, so might as well do these things together. Oh, oh, I did forget one thing. Let's finish this off real quick. It's got a little pipe thing that comes up through here. Something else I want to kind of go over real quick that I just remembered that I had wanted to go over. And it's a very, it's very important to me. It's something that I do that I think will help a lot of people. Um, 
go on this panel. We'll do it real quick here. Um, I have this this shape here. It's it's like a in the story. It's like a big basin kind of thing. Um, uh, I'm trying to think the best way to do this. It's almost well. It's almost straight on this. It's going to be straight at least. So let's say I take my, well, that didn't work. See, this blue pencil sucks sometimes. All right, let's say, take my straight edge. And it's gonna be, it's basically the horizon line here. But this would work for any kind of thing that you need to, some straight, um, uh, like you, instead, of, if you do a straight edge, if something you want straight, I don't, I don't believe in perfectly straight lines. They don't exist in nature. So I'll draw out a straight line, but when I ink it, I'll ink it by hand because those imperfections in my hand mimic the imperfections in real life, especially with this thing, which is supposed to be straight but it's also supposed to look weathered i'll even make little tick marks it's like a stone basin kind of thing um but you don't have to do that as long as you just make sure you realize that that if it's something mechanical then you can use a straight edge and that's fine if you want to but if it's something that but most things in nature aren't um they're not straight there's imperfections in the lines. So just bear that in mind. It's something I wanted to kind of bring up and I didn't really have a chance to. Um, like right here when I drew this, I could have used a French curve or something to do that. But what's the point? You know, make it look more, you get more life when you're not stuck with a ruler. And I hate rulers. So anyway, that's my quick inking tutorial. Hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully you get something out of it. Um, you know, feel free to message me, feel free to ask questions, feel free to like, comment, share, whatever you want to do. And um, if you like this stuff and you're up to it, um, check out my Patreon. I'll put the link in under the video. Uh, and, you know, I, my Patreon is like a tip jar. You can...